Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here an HP touchpad tablet, which is running WebOS software, which is what it comes with, um, but it also can run Google Android. And as of today, I've um, downloaded the version that was made available by CyanogenMod and installed Android, and I just wanted to show you how that works. Real quick, first, let's just take a look around the WebOS operating system. It's a little different from Android or the iPad operating system. Um, you've got sort of your list of applications and settings and so forth here, but you've also got these this multitasking view that lets you switch between applications. There's a couple of really great apps, like the uh, Amazon Kindle application works very nicely on this tablet, and the web browser is pretty good. Um, I also really uh, have grown used to the keyboard, which is uh, not quite something that I could touch type on, but it works pretty well uh, for what it is. And we've got multi-touch and pinch to zoom and so forth. And uh, yeah, so that's a quick look at just sort of how WebOS works, but let's take a look at what happens when you reboot and run Android. Now the touchpad has been discontinued by Hewlett Packard. It has a 9.7 inch display, uh, 1024 by 768 pixels. Um, not that common a resolution for Android devices, but um, the rest of the specifications are pretty similar. From this boot menu, you can see we can choose WebOS, uh, Clockwork Mod Recovery, or Cyanogen Mod. And we've got a little splash screen here telling us we're going to Cyanogen Mod. The um, processor is a 1.2 gigahertz uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon dual core processor. It um, can run as high as 1.5 gigahertz, but, out of, uh, but by default it does run at 1.2. And you can overclock it both in WebOS and in Android. Um, so here we're booting into Android 2.3 Gingerbread. This is a version of Android that's really designed to run on phones rather than tablets, but it works pretty well on a tablet as well. There's some applications that might not uh, look as good as they possibly could because you're running the um, the phone version, though. Um, Cyanogen Mod got uh, Wi-Fi working, video works, uh, graphics work pretty well. The accelerometer works, so we should have automatic screen rotation. And uh, overall, it's uh, it's pretty snappy. In fact, it feels faster in some ways using Android on this device than using WebOS. Now, I actually don't like the keyboard as much as I do the uh, WebOS keyboard, and um, the web browser, though, does seem to be a little bit faster, and it does support uh, multi-touch, as we mentioned. In terms of applications, um, out of the box, if you just sort of install CyanogenMod, you, um, first of all, you can't reboot into WebOS. It's still there, taking up space on your hard drive, but or on your uh, solid-state drive, but if you want to be able to reboot, you need to make sure to install the MoBoot option. And if you want to be able to download applications from the Google Android Market, you're going to need to install the G Apps module as well. There's instructions on how to do all of this at lilliputing.com. And... Um, if you do have the Android Market installed, some applications still might not show up. So the real benefit of running Android on this tablet instead of running WebOS, or in addition to running WebOS, is that you have access to hundreds of thousands of applications instead of a couple of thousand applications. There just aren't as many good apps for WebOS. And on top of that, even though this is still an alpha build and there's still some bugs to be worked out, it, uh, it feels a lot snappier and more responsive than WebOS. Um, but anyways, as I was mentioning, you can go into the Android market, you can uh, search for apps and download apps, but certain apps might not be available. So for instance, I searched for the uh, Dolphin browser application, and the Dolphin HD web browser just did not show up. There's a donation version here, but this is actually from a shady company. They're charging $4.99, but the Dolphin browser should be free. Um, so you see all of these add-ons for the browser, but not the browser itself. Likewise, I couldn't find the Facebook app or the Twitter app. Uh, some of these applications might not run because the Android market realizes the screen resolution on this device is not uh, right for those particular applications. Um, but I was able to download a number of other apps. So for instance, here we have the Android version of the Kindle application, and it'll synchronize so that if you start reading a book in WebOS and then switch, uh, it should take you to the last read page. You don't get that nice uh, two-pane view, but overall it works pretty nicely. Um, games look really great on here. Robo Defense is a uh, tower defense style game, and it runs very smoothly, very fast. And 
and let's see what else do we have here. The Netflix application works surprisingly well. The video quality is not stellar, but it uh, it's good enough for uh, for watching videos. And what else have I installed here? Uh, we've got the Google Music, uh, Google Plus application, um, another ebook application called Aldeco, and the Amazon App Store. So, some applications that you might not find in the Android market you can download from the Amazon App Store. I'm clearly trying to do too many things at once here. Um, now, on the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that uh, since there aren't all the regular Android buttons on the touchpad, you get the um, home menu back and search buttons here on the side instead, and notifications show up at the bottom. You can pull up the app drawer here to, uh, or the app tray to, uh, or uh, sorry, notification tray, or the application drawer. And uh, overall, the experience is a lot like using a phone, except bigger. So you get bigger videos, bigger web pages, bigger applications, and so forth. Uh, eventually, when Google releases the source code for Ice Cream Sandwich, which will be the first version of Android designed to run on both tablets and phones, the uh, CyanogenMod Mod team says that they will uh, port that to the touchpad, but it could take a couple of months once the source code is available. So right now, this is uh, this is an alpha release. They're going to still do some bug fixes and, uh, and improve some features, but overall it has most of what you would want from an Android uh, device and uh, lets you use the HP touchpad, which, um, again, HP has discontinued, but it became a pretty popular item when they decided to sell off remaining inventory for $99 to $149. So I know there's a lot of people out there who bought this tablet and are looking for uh, ways to get more use out of it, and installing Android is certainly one of the ways that you can do that. Um, so... That is pretty much what I wanted to go over today. Um, in order to reboot to WebOS, you press and hold the power button, you choose Reboot, and you choose the Reboot to WebOS option. You can also boot into Recovery if you want to uh, flash some extra items. So for instance, if you you have to install MoBoot first, otherwise you're going to have problems rebooting to anything except for Android. But if you've installed MoBoot first and then you want to install the G apps so that you get access to the Android market and so forth, you can do that by rebooting to uh, Recovery. And uh, that'll also be how you apply updates when future versions of uh, Cyanogen Mod are available. Uh, this is the Android, or uh, yeah, Amazon App Store for Android, as I'd mentioned previously. Uh, audio works pretty well. I just turned it off for the purposes of this demonstration, but you can hear videos. Uh, I installed the Pandora and TuneIn radio applications, and they both work. And um, yeah, so this is Brad Linder taking a look at. Um, Google Android 2.3.7 or a CyanogenMod 7.1 running on the HP touchpad.